Speak, Faustus. Do you deliver this as your deed? Aye, take it, and the devil gives thee good on it. Now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. Tell me, where is the place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, but where about? Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in one self place. For where we are is hell, and where hell is, there must we ever be. How comes it then that thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Think'st thou that I, who saw the face of God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with ten thousand hells in being deprived of everlasting bliss? Come, I think hell's a fable. I think so still, till experience changed my mind. For Mephistopheles, damnation is denied is so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? Go, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Say he surrenders up to him his soul. Oh, thou hast lost celestial happiness, pleasures unspeakable, bliss without end. No, I leap up to my God. Who pulls me down? See, see where Christ's blood streams in the firmament. One drop would save my soul, half a drop. Now, Faustus, let thine eyes with horror stare into that vast perpetual torture house. There are the Furies tossing damned souls on burning forks, their bodies boil in lead. There are live quarters broiling on the coals that ne'er can die. This ever-burning chair is for over-tortured souls to rest them in. But yet all these are nothing. Thou shalt see ten thousand tortures that more horrid be. Oh, spare me, Lucifer! Nay, thou must feel them, taste the smart of all. He that loves pleasure must, for pleasure, fall. The reality of hell in Marlowe's Faustus say the word hell and it immediately paints pictures in our minds. Hell to pay at the chapel door, the hell that is war, the bat out of hell, hell freezing over, a hell cat and the hound of hell, hell's teeth, hell's bells, a hell of a party, the snowball that hasn't a chance in hell. Simply as a word Hell has great potency for us because of its ability to take these abstract notions of redemption, damnation, eternity and translate them into a palpable landscape. Percy Bysshe Shelley once wrote that hell was a city much like London and in the marriage of heaven and hell William Blake was able to summon up a clear vision of the deepest and darkest underworld. By degrees we beheld the infinite abyss, fiery as the smoke of a burning city. Beneath us, at an immense distance, was the sun, black but shining. Round it were fiery tracks on which revolved vast spiders crawling after their prey which flew or rather swam in the infinite deep. In the most terrific shapes of animals sprung from corruption. These are devils and are called powers of the air. I now asked my companion, which was my eternal lot? He said, between the black and white spiders. But now, from between the black and white spiders, a cloud and fire burst and rolled through the deep, blackening all beneath, so that the nether deep grew black as the sea and rolled with a terrible noise. Till looking east, between the clouds and the waves, we saw a cataract of blood mixed with fire, and not many stones throw from us appeared and sunk again the scaly fold of a monstrous serpent. 
And now we saw it was the head of Leviathan. His forehead was divided into streaks of green and purple like those on a tiger's forehead. Soon we saw his mouth and red gills hang just above the raging foam, tinging the black deep with beams of blood advancing towards us with all the fury of a spiritual existence. Balios expressed his emotional and spiritual ideas through his music. Now, he was a lifelong atheist, so hell for him was simply the denial of the absolute heaven that was the beauty of life and love and their divine music. It was a place of meaningless language, dreadful noise, monstrous suffering. Here he describes in his own words the arrival of Faust in the infernal regions. Then hell fell silent. The only sound to be heard was the dreadful boiling of the vast lakes of fire and the gnashing of teeth of those souls in eternal agony. Then, way down in the depths, a terrifying ritual was performed. The horror. The horror. A genuinely hellish landscape. For most people now, I imagine, the idea is better caught in lines from W.H. Auden. Hell is neither here nor there. Hell is not anywhere. Hell is hard to bear. Now my hour has come, and it's time to leave this heaven for the earthly paradise of the Royal Albert Hall. Pupils from Lena Gardens Primary School read from Divine Songs for Children by Isaac Watts. <laughs> 